Welcome to the masterclass drawing the human figure and in particular drawing the studies of the foot. My name is Jocelyn Moon and I'm going to try to simplify the human foot into some wedges and planes and blocks to make it easy for its construction. And we're starting off with the drawing of the foot with a fair amount of weight on it. So we're going to construct the pressure of the leg coming down, the ankle, the cylindrical quality of that ankle. Noticing the axis of the ankle bones with the inside ankle bone being a little minimally higher than the outside one. And fitting into that this lovely big wedge of the arch of the bones of the main mass of the foot working down towards the angle we feel across there, an arch across there of the toe area. And then feeling the toes, first of all, as a simple group, noticing the mass of the big toe and the fact that we're looking into the end of the cylinder of the big toe. I'm drawing with a graphite crayon here, which is helping us to simplify those planes into the simplest possible wedges and masses like so. Then we can subdivide and have a, a little very quick look uh, initially at the individual toes and the fact that they radiate out. We've got a, a change of axis from that to that to that. Can you feel that through the drawing there? So these toes are slightly swinging out. One, two, and the next one here with a slightly inward twist, very characterful of that toe, and the little toe, which actually in most people does this little under twist and roll around like so. Okay, so that gives you a broad concept to it. Let's go back again and have a look at the muscles of the leg, which are affecting the foot because those are the muscles that move the bones of the foot and the lovely tendon that comes so strongly down through there and the boniness and hardness of that ankle. We can just emphasize that a little bit with tone and we can then put a little bit more tone under that ankle bone there and feel the sharpness of that coming through there. And then again, we'll have another little look at the arch of this coming through there of the main bones and muscles of the foot there. A little plane of tone there. Again, another little look at the outside ankle bone, which of course is the fibula coming down. We can see a little bit of the heel and we will probably put a little tone over that to drop that tone down through there. Here again we're coming down to this tendon of the big toe which is coming through there as you can see there and onto the bones of the toe that it's going to move. So I'm now going to get out my 6B pencil and I'll just do a little more analytical look at that. Obviously we need some overlapping lines if we're going to show that tucks behind that. We're going to perhaps look here at this in a little more detail on that ankle bone, the way it tucks in there and we can feel some muscles and form coming from round the back. And because of the pressure here, we're getting a pressure on that side of the foot. In fact, we're actually we can use some cross hatching there as we detail it a bit, to show that that section, if we could do a cross section across there, we'd see that wonderful ellipse that's coming around that. And sometimes it does help to do cross sections. It helps you as a student to analyze what you are looking at. We tuck that in there, and there again, we can see around the back, a little tiny little bit of the heel area, just a tiny bit through there. That's coming down again through here, and then spreading out to that fullness around the finger side, the little finger side of the toe there, the little toe, where it's coming around and forming that pad there. Let's have a look now at the way these joints and forms of the toes come out from this section here. For example, that toe there is turning. We're seeing a little bit of the inside underside before it comes up to that lovely little joint that's doing that. And that's turning over. We're seeing the side of that coming through there. And we're actually seeing the fingernail tipping that way. If you're not sure of the di direction or angle of a small thing like a fingernail, draw it a little bit longer than it really is. And that will help to clarify that for you. Here again, we're getting this another look at this finger here, or joint or of the little t second toe. And we're getting it turning under and turning under and turning under. So again, we're seeing some tone on that side of it. There's some tone there as it's turning away and then light hitting the end of that as it's coming towards you and then the finger toenail fitting in there. I call them fingers because they really are little fingers and they're coming under like so and there's the end of that fitting in there. See how I simplify them all to the simplest possible wedges and masses and that way it's very, very easy to draw it. 
And sometimes it's a help when our model flexes his toes like he just did then because it enables us to see some of the joints that you wouldn't normally see in other positions. It just makes you a little more aware of it. So it's not always necessary that your model stay absolutely rigid. You can often see things and transfer information from one position to another. Here again, see how I'm looking at the direction of those toenails. You see how that changed from that position to that position. See how they're changing in their direction. So each toe is not a copy of the other. They're similar, but they're not the same. Here's the end of that toe again. Here we are coming forward again to this toe, which is quite a prominent one. In some people, this toe is longer than your big toe. You need to look at your individual model. In this particular model, it's fairly similar to the big toe, but it's still a very strong, you know, important toe. You can almost feel the bones coming through the flesh there. You can feel the, the bone coming through, forming that condyle, each little bone being something like this. And as each bone fits into the next bone, like so, you can actually feel that through the flesh. You can actually feel that little dimple in the centre like that, and you feel a little change of tone as it fits up around there. And you can feel that coming down through the shaft of the bone there. And it's very important that you know what is underneath the flesh that you're drawing. These little overlapping pieces of tone that I'm drawing for you, they're very important because they show that the form is not a continuous pattern, but the form fits overlaps one over the other. And here is the big toe. You can see a lovely arch. And we're straightening up on these toenails. Look at the position of the toenails. I think we'll just raise that a bit, actually, there. And we're seeing the end of the toe very, very strongly, the end of that big toe. It's filling out to be a, a lovely, big, strong toe there. And there's the foreshortened fingernail of that toe. It's just going straight in, very, very short there, as you can feel there because we're seeing so much of the end of it. You can't see the top of it and the end of it at the same time. So the more we see of this end, you can see how I'm trying to make that look really round there. The more we see of that, the less we're going to see of the nail there. And you may be aware of some of these tendons coming up through there very, very slightly. I wouldn't make too much of them, but it depends a little bit on the position. If he tenses his toes up, they'll become more conscious. We're seeing a little bit of that attachment of that big tendon there onto the joint there, a little bit of tone under that. Often very slight modelling will give it to you. Here's another bit of tone needed to just emphasise that joint there. As you can see, that actually narrows in there, and you can feel that cuddling in and you can feel the rest of that coming in behind there. So that gives you an idea of drawing that foreshortened foot there. One could certainly go on rendering it with great detail and subtlety, but I think we need to show some of those other positions that we've got on the foot. Right, here we have this foot now in a walking position. And again, we're very aware of the ankle coming down, the ankle bone, as you see there. See, I'm drawing with this graphite crayon, keeping it very, very simple. The wedge of the back of the foot and the little toe side. One of the most difficult sides to draw in either hand or foot is the little toe side. See how we're starting to roll a little bit and seeing some of the big toe side coming down, a lovely simple wedge. See how I draw in rather simple blocks and planes. And the, this graphite crayon is wonderful for this because it stops you fiddling with the little details. The details are lovely, but they come a little later in the drawing. Here again, planning it is so important. A little toe turned under, as you can see there. A little bit more pad to the foot there, the heel of that area there. Just a little fuller there. And there's a nice fullness around there, strength and mass to the foot, as you can see there. A bit more arch there. We get these interconnecting pieces so that we always get something overlapping something else in the human body. And that allows things to fit together and stops them breaking off, as it were. Here's the heel bone. We're getting the calcaneum or the attachment of this big muscle that comes down the back of the leg onto the heel bone there. It's important that you study anatomy. It's not necessary that you know all the names. It becomes a bit pedantic, but it does help you. They've got to have some sort of a name. Uh, so here we have, again, a little more tone on that. As you can see, that's starting to look quite like a foot at this stage. And really, a good drawing should look like what it's going to be right from the word go. Okay, let's have a little more tone on the end of that big toe because we need to establish that it is going like so. The end of the next toe, look at those ellipses and just see what they're doing as they fit into there. Let's get our 6B pencil out again and have another look at some of the details. Oh, great, thank you. Great, lovely. 
And coming through here, we've got a little bit of tonal modelling, which is going to be quite nice just to... That'll be fine. And we'll just feather that in and just have another little look. I've got a line there, but in fact it's a little piece of tone, which is part of that turning under of the end of the foot. You can see how flattening out that is. From this big bulk, it's flattening out. And we're seeing a little bit of that toe joint on the other side, and then out of that springs the toe itself. So we can put some tone on that because that's a tendon there. It's pretty strong there. And we need to show that there. You can actually see that tendon risen up. In fact, sometimes you can actually use a little bit of your rubber there to lift the light on that so we can see that a little more strongly there. Okay? We've got a joint on the toe here. This is where we're starting to look for detail. Now, you wouldn't do this when you start the drawing. Of course, but at this stage we can now rather generally start to look for these analytical details. Here's this joint coming down and we're now starting to come down to the area where the toenail is. And you can actually see that toenail even rising up in tone and, and facing a slightly upward lift there. It's, it's lifted up quite a bit so the toe is disappearing down behind it. And there we're seeing this lovely bulbous end of the end of the toe and feeling that fitting down into that. We often get a very slight groove of flesh as it fits down into that area there. It's quite lovely. And the pressure of that toe against the ground there. So that's quite beautiful. And then we've got the second toe. At some stage, you do have to eventually draw one toe at a time. You can't draw the whole lot all at once. But you've got that very good blocking in so you won't get lost. So here's the next plane coming down. It's the next joint coming over. Again, the toenail fitting into that and again hiding the little bit of toe that disappears around the other side and allowing you to see the end of the toe there and quite a strong pressure against the floor. So you, well, when you're drawing, you're looking at what the body is pressing against and that helps a lot too because it doesn't just exist as a ghost by itself. There is the pressure of the floor and how it affects the form as you can see there. Sometimes it'll flatten it out or give you the sense that there is weight there. Right, coming down to the next toe, again slightly different form, slightly softer form, not quite as aggressive as the first two toes. And then it comes down, again the little fingernail of that particular one is just tipping under a little bit. Quite, quite interesting how its axis has changed. So we've changed the axis of the end of the toenail from that slide and then to that. So it, it's starting to roll, the foot is starting to roll a little bit. Okay, and then we get to this toe, again quite a different character to it. Again the fingernail or toenail is tucked right in under and we're getting much more of a bulbous end to that toe. It's starting to change its character. That's why you can't just draw one toe and draw the lot. Everyone is different and they're different in individuals but there is a similarity in some ways. But here's the little toe, which again is being curled right under. It's rather lovely. And it, it just really tucks right under you, very conscious of the roll of it, and the fact it's tucked itself right under that other one, and the toenail is tucked so much under that you can hardly see the toenail at all. It's just tucked right under. It's lovely. And that's fitting under. And you're very conscious of this change of plane as it comes down there, and you're aware of the tendon of the toes coming in. And you may even get a little bit of flesh through there because what you're seeing in particularly there is the flesh of the space between the toes and you can just see a hint of it and that little hint is often enough. Sometimes a little bit of tone here will just make you aware that that is dropping back into that area there. Uh, you need again just to look at the pressure of the floor against that there and just seeing whether this overlaps. These overlaps are so important because that gives you the idea that this toe is coming out from something else. Okay, uh, just the strength up here may need a little more strength, just a little more modelling there, probably enough almost on this drawing now to give you an idea of how to block in a foot. Some people have veins on their feet. This gentleman has some, he's a very young gentleman, so we're only getting these veins just slightly developing, uh, but don't overdo them. Sometimes you can just use a little bit of um, putty rubber just to lift the light out because each one is really just a little mountain or a little valley on the form and you just be careful of those things or you can overdo them but they're quite lovely and they do follow around the form and they do tend to give you just a little bit of characterfulness at times which is quite delightful. Thank you. We will have the other underside position. Now this relaxed or underside of the foot can be drawn from either this position where we're drawing it from the toe side. Another delightful position is to draw them just 
by laying your model on the ground or drawing them completely upside down as if they were lying on the beach. Any of those positions. And the, the sole of the foot is quite a lovely form in itself. So let's again look at the ankle. You see how I'm not drawing the foot by itself. I'm looking at it in a totality with the ankle. Okay, so again looking at those broad directions. You see how I'm drawing from the shoulder in fairly big sweeps. This helps you to look at the broad issues and stops you fiddling with it. Okay, so there's your, again, the plan for the big toe. And we're looking at the, what happens to the end of the pad of the foot because we're now looking at the sole of the foot and seeing what happens to the pads underneath. Got this big one, very strong, of course, on the underside of the foot. And the tendons are starting to show there where he's going to help him walk. And we're seeing the other toes curling over there, which are quite lovely. They're not pressing against anything, they're just curling over and under there. So we have a look at those there. And how the pad of the foot, I always love this little bit, where the pad of the foot pushes up against the toes and the toes snuggle in to the pad of the foot. So they go in and out a little bit. There's some quite lovely pieces of, of, of drawing there. So just feel that there. Now we've come back to here, we've got this bone of the toe and the tendon of the toe, the tendon that moves it coming through there. We just raise the thickness through there a little bit because I didn't have quite enough and we'll bring the ankle a little stronger. Now those changes as you draw, that's okay. There's no problem in seeing something as you draw and making a change and this is the stage to make those changes. So now you, you need to enjoy that ability to change and construct. Now I'm just going to, I'm almost as if I had my charcoal or, or graphite on his leg itself. I'm saying that goes under, this comes out of that the heel comes out of that. So I'm really trying to, to feel what is actually happening, as if I was a sculptor. And I think that's the only way you will draw. You draw as if you were making a sculpture on the flat surface. I'm feeling that coming through, and feeling the narrowness of that area there. There's a quite a strong, flat, straight piece through there, which needs a bit of instruction through there. Okay, again, I will get my stronger pencil out there, my 6B pencil, only because it just gives me a little more control than the graphite. I like the fact that the graphite is broad and loose, but this is just a little bit more analytical. Sometimes because I, it's not as broad, I actually have to use several strokes, like shading, to build up the form. Okay, there's the pad at the end of the toe, fitting into that narrow section there under that joint there and fitting in around the base there. Isn't that lovely? And you can actually be aware, even though you can't see the nail, you're aware of the end of the toe. I'll just rub that bit of original construction out there, made it look a bit big. You can feel that little pad at the side of the nail and you can feel that little bit. I always feel that when you're drawing almost a contour like that, uh, you have to be very careful what you see because you need to look at the clues. You might see a little bit of nail, a little bit of joint, just a slight thing that says, ah, I know what I'm looking at. And this is where you need to know what you're looking at. See? So there you are, how that came in front and how that one went behind. So here I know that this is a toe that's going to be an ellipse that's going to tuck in under that and fit in around that. So I'm adding to what I see with what I know. Always remember that. That's why we study in art school, we study anatomy, and we study often more than we're going to need. Some students say, I'm never going to need that. But in a way you do. It becomes digested and it becomes part of your digested knowledge that comes out when you need it. Okay, so we have that fitted in. Again, this lovely feeling of the pad of the... I need a bit more tone under that toe just to really take that up. See, that's the... It's like that turning plane away from there. See that? And there, there it's fitting in there. Here we have another toe. See how I'm often drawing the ellipses? to give me that feeling that that's underneath there. Right, again, turning under, you might need some more. That's a pad, of the lovely pads under the toes. They're beautiful things. They really have quite lovely drawing in themselves. There you are, more tone under that to tuck that away under there. It's all in the shadow area, I know, but it still needs drawing even into the shadows. There you are, there's another one there. We put some more tone on that to take that right back. And there's our little toe, and you can see there's a grouping. The little toe always seems to be a little separate, a bit like the little finger. It seems to just grow by itself just a tiny bit and do its own little thing. And there you are, that's tucking in. There's the pads of the foot, 
and again we can sometimes I often draw overarm I know I'm probably getting in the way of the camera there but quite often I hold the pencil like that as if I need to get around the form itself it, the form itself becomes so powerful that I need to work overarm to get around it so I'm still aware of the strength of this big joint that's that's anchoring the, the big toe there I need to and, the, and then perhaps some more tone to just join that up and get the pad of the, the little finger side, the little toe side to join through there, fairly straight through there. Okay, again there might be pressure here because here the heel is resting on the ground so we might have a, a slight change of pressure point there and you might with your cross hatching develop up some more subtle shading on the heel perhaps where you need to perhaps analyse the slight changes and sometimes the cross hatching will give you that subtlety um, you can probably get it just as easily with the graphite but it, it seems to just because it is a pointed tool you feel that you can cuddle and stroke it a little bit more and that sometimes helps you with your drawing okay so that's what I'm doing there I'm feathering that in with slightly overlapping strokes I'm just feathering that form in having got the basic construction there I'm just feathering that in a little bit there and, uh, and, and modelling that back in there. It's a personal choice of whether you do that or not and uh, to what your requirements are. You really feel that that's a lovely drop down and that fitting in, that, that's quite a lovely thing there because that's fitting in a bit like a saddle joint, it's not actually, but it's giving you that sense there as that's coming over and it's giving you the strength of joining over that foot there, that's really quite lovely there just take that line out there because that's a tendon it needs to be a little bit stronger over that ankle joint there that's the joint of the tibia on that side the condyle of the tibia we're drawing there and that needs to be fairly strong there but you can and you're really sensing a little bit more tone there just feel that change of form and change of muscle through there and perhaps just a little more emphasis on this this change there I think that's pretty important because if we don't emphasize that we won't get the foot dropping away. See, what can happen is because you've rather detailed that toe in there, I mean, maybe even put a bit of tone over. I'm just pulling it together as drawing now. By putting a little more tone over that, I'll just keep the sense that that is the underside of the foot. It's so easy to over-detail a particular thing and lose the big planes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these little studies of the feet. Uh, the emphasis is on simplicity, structure, looking for overlapping forms, where they come from, where they're going to, where things are pressing on the ground, or think of it as the ground pressing up on the object itself. Looking at ellipses, looking at the masses of the foot. Thank you.